The Beirut-Lebanon explosion earlier this month was one of the worst man-made disasters in human history. Over 150 people were killed and thousands more were injured. The blast left a reported 300,000 people homeless and could end up costing the city $15 billion. The cause of the explosion is widely believed to be associated with the improper storage of nearly 3,000 tons of ammonium nitrate, an ingredient in fertilizer. The massive amount of the chemical compound was reportedly confiscated off of a cargo ship in the port of Beirut in 2014. In the United States, a perception often exists that industrial accidents of that magnitude simply couldn't happen here. Our regulations are too stringent, our workers too skilled. But could it? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. Before we examine the current ammonium nitrate safety situation in America, let's take a step back in history, where we'll find that on more than one occasion, incidents similar to the Beirut explosion have in fact happened in the United States. In the port of Texas City, Texas in 1947, a ship carrying over 2,000 tons of ammonium nitrate caught fire and exploded, killing more than 550 people. In 2013, in the town of West Texas, an ammonium nitrate explosion in a fertilizer storage facility killed 15 people. After the West Texas incident in particular, changes were made to NFPA 400, Hazardous Materials Code, to strengthen its requirements related to ammonium nitrate. The changes required, for instance, that new ammonium nitrate storage facilities be made with non-combustible materials always be sprinklered, and that an evacuation radius of one mile be established around such facilities in which anyone in that zone would be notified they need to leave in the event of a fire. But is there more work to do? A statement released by the U.S. Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board, or the CSB, in the days following Beirut, said that ammonium nitrate storage in America falls under a patchwork of federal safety standards which still contain many gaps. These gaps include persistent problems pertaining to the storage of ammonium nitrate in or around combustible materials like wood, as well as non-uniform sprinkler requirements, despite what newer editions of NFPA 400 require. Joining us now to discuss this is Megan Hausreit. Megan is the director of the NFPA Fire and Life Safety Policy Institute in Washington, D.C., so the CSB statement said that many gaps still exist in the federal regulation of ammonium nitrate. Can you tell us a bit more about um, you know, what some of those gaps are and why you think they're still there? In the report that the CSB put together, they highlighted uh, two of the main regulatory programs that are sort of designed to prevent larger hazardous material incidents. That's EPA's risk management program and OSHA's process safety management standard. And um, neither of those at the time of the West accident had ammonium nitrate under their purview. So there, there was no regulation that required sort of the hazard analysis and other steps to be taken to make sure that the material was stored and used safely. At this point, Ammonium nitrate is still not under either of those programs, and the CSB has pointed out that that gap remains. So the short answer is yes, the United States could experience an incident like Beirut, but there are tools out there that can help to mitigate the risks, such as NFPA 400, and it's critical those tools be examined and implemented now to prevent something like this from happening again not just in the U.S., but anywhere around the world. You can access NFPA 400 for free by going to nfpa.org 400. The requirements for ammonium nitrate are found in Chapter 11. Additionally, in the description of this video, you'll find links to more NFPA resources related to the Beirut explosion and its aftermath. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it, leave us a comment, and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.